Hey, welcome back, everyone. I'm Jennifer Richman, and this is the Dwelling Richly Bible Study, and I'm very glad you're here. Today, we are continuing on in Lesson 2 of our Chill Bible Study through Psalm 27. This is Day 2 of Lesson 2, so if that's the day you're hoping to tune into, you're in the right place. <laughs> and if I'm just appearing on your Facebook screen during this video, Hi, join us. This is a great Bible study and a really great way to spend about 15 minutes of your day um, each day, uh, getting into God's word, connecting back, taking a deep breath, and finding ways to really rethink how we handle stress and how we truly rest and doing it from a biblical perspective. So I'm glad you're here. And let's go ahead and start with prayer and jump into our lesson. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you once again for our time together in your word today. We give this time to you. We release to you the things in our life right now that feel stressful and might call us away. Help us to focus and just truly be with you and present in this moment now in our study time together in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Right? Okay. Let's go ahead over to uh, the Bible study. I'm going to share the screen with you. For those of you listening on the podcast, as you know, um, you can't see the screen, uh, but you can always join us on YouTube or Facebook and one of the pages that I post over there. So happy to have you here. Hey, don't forget also, this is a great day to say hi and leave a comment. I know, I know there's some of you out there who have been listening to the Dwelling Richly Bible Study ever since we started, and you have yet to even say hi one time. I don't know. Are you shy? Do you not want anybody else to know that you're listening to this Bible study? Are you a covert Bible study spy? <laughs> anyway, just say hi. Leave a comment. And maybe don't no, just leave a comment. Um, share something that you're learning or a thought that occurred to you, or maybe even a question that you have, because as a community, we'll see and we'll connect back with you. And also, as you know, or maybe you don't know, uh, I love to pray for you by name. If you leave a comment and uh, just say that you are here, you can share a prayer request or you can just say hi and I'll know you're here and I'll be able to pray for you by name when I see that. So take a minute to do that today and let's go ahead and get into the study. Uh, we're going to begin by reading through Psalm 27 from the New American Standard Bible today. So here we go. Psalm 27, a psalm of fearless trust in God, a psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? When evildoers come upon me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though a war rise against me, in spite of this, I shall be confident. One thing I have asked from the Lord that I shall seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will conceal me in his tabernacle. In the secret place of his tent, he will hide me. He will lift me up on a rock. And now my head will be lifted up above my enemies around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice and be gracious to me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, O Lord, I shall seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not abandon me or forsake me, O God of my salvation. For my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and teach me in a level path because of my foes. Do not deliver me over to the desires, uh, the desire of my adversaries or false witnesses that have uh, risen against me. And such as I breathe out violence, I would have despaired unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Oof, I love how that's worded. I would have despaired unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. Wow. I love it. I love hearing it from another version, don't you? And uh, I know I've shared this with you before, but just as a reminder, a great way to use Bible Gateway 
is to um, put a couple of different versions up at the same time. Uh, maybe you have actual paper Bibles that you can use to do that with, but uh, it certainly is convenient just to have it right here. What a blessing the internet is to be able to offer this wealth of information. Is there really any excuse for people not knowing the truth of God's word? There isn't, right? All right, let's head back over to our lesson. And don't forget to write and memorize Psalm 27, 5. Now, we, for consistency's sake, I, I like to make sure I'm memorizing it out of the same version. Here's how it sounds from the New American Standard. For in the day of trouble, he will conceal me in his tabernacle. In the secret place of his tent, he will hide me. He will lift me up on a rock. And um, we are actually memorizing, or I am, maybe you've, Maybe that's the version you picked to memorize it out of. Um, but I'm reacquainting myself with it from the New International Version, so 27 verse 5. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of a sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. There we go. New International. All right. Heading back over to our lesson. Don't forget to write that in the top. Remember that part of dwelling richly and the whole concept of this particular Bible study the dwelling richly study is to dwell richly and to think about what that would look like. So we read the word, we write the word, we speak the word, we share the word, we create from the word, embrace that, enjoy that process also. All right. How do you feel when you get stressed? Question number one, how do you feel when you get stressed? Do I feel anxious? I feel worried. I feel sad. I feel scared. I feel sometimes maybe immobilized. Um, I was uh, a witness to a pretty graphic car accident a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, that's an immediate moment of stress. And you, when it, when it happened so quickly in front of me, I was, we all of us stopped at the intersection who weren't involved in it, of course. And it was just like, people were dumbfounded. Like they didn't know what to do. And then in a, a couple of seconds, a few people just parked their cars, rushed out of their cars and, and got to the scene. And I happened to be in a position where I, I couldn't quite get out in front and, and, and do that um, without getting in other people's way. So thank God there were people who were able to get to the, the victims inside the, the cars. But boy, that was stressful. And I realized, wow, as I replay it through my mind, if I had been closer to the scene and been able to get out, would I have gotten out? Um, how could I have helped? And, you know, you rethink it. But I think for that moment, you're just so dumbfounded. So stressful situations might make you feel all of the above, right, at any given moment. So number two, our focus in the chill study is to rethink how we deal with stress and find true rest. This lesson will look at how we can confidently hide in God. What imagery do you find in this psalm that portrays this truth? Consider how David illustrates where, when, and why he can hide in God. Let's go back and take a look at it. He says, um, I want us to look through the where, the when, and the why we hide in, in God. And let's just go ahead and through. Um, uh, in terms of hiding in God, he says, my heart will not fear. I will not fear. I will not dread. I'm not going to be worried. The one thing I've asked, and this is I seek, that I can dwell in the house of the Lord. And he's talking about this in the sense of even hiding out in that tabernacle, in that tent. So where is he going? in God's presence, like we talked about last lesson. He's coming to God. When does he do that? In the day of trouble. Um, and why does he do it? Well, it says in verse four, to behold the beauty of the Lord, to turn his eyes from what he's dealing with here and turn to God in those moments. Meditate in his temple, right? In the day of trouble. When? In the day of trouble. He will conceal me. Where? In his tabernacle. In the secret place of his tent, he will hide me. He will lift me up on a rock. And that's a metaphor uh, for a strong, sturdy, safe place. It doesn't necessarily literally mean, although David did hide in rocks and was lifted up on them, but it's a metaphor. He will put me on a safe, sturdy, strong place, not on shifting sand, but in, upon a rock, right? Well, there's, there's some thoughts for you uh, on that, and I wonder how you think about it as well. Tell me what you where, where do you see this? What imagery you find? Um, where do you go? Why do you go? When do you go when you hide in God and consider how David illustrates it there? Number three, what three truths about God does David announce at the beginning of this psalm? Well, let's take a look. 
back over here. He says, um, the Lord is my light. All right. There's a truth about God and my salvation. And then he asks this kind of rhetorical question, whom do I fear? And then he says, the Lord is the what? The defense of my life. Here's a pro tip for doing your Bible study. When you're in the word and you see the, the word is, I want you to think about it as an equal sign, an equal sign. Whatever's on the left is equal to in some fashion to what's on the right. So we see the Lord equals my light. The Lord is my light. Um, the Lord is equal sign, uh, my salvation. The Lord is my defense. So back over here to answer that question is my light, my salvation, my defense. Those are truths about God right there at the opening of this song. So consider how God, number four, can be your light, salvation, and defense. How do these traits of God look in your life today? Write or draw how you see this truth. I like giving you the option to not just always write, 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 and use words. Some of you hate drawing, I get it, but others of you really enjoy that. So go for it, do that, draw it out. Um, how do you see God as being your light? Um, what does a light do? Think about how God becomes illumination for you, help, helping you to see things clearly. Your salvation. Well, why does God need to be our salvation? He would only need to be our salvation if we needed to be saved from something. What do you need to be saved from? Well, for starters, myself. I need to be saved from my own sin, my own wicked heart. The Bible says my heart is deceitful and wicked above everything. Who can even understand it, right? Well, he saves me from that. And he's my defense. So he's the light who shows what's out there, illuminates myself as well, saves me from myself, saves me from the situations I'm in, and he's my defense. He's got me, but he's also got that border, that hedge of protection we've heard about in the Bible as well. And he's that defense um, against anything that could come up against me. And things do come up against us, don't they? So Number five, write a verse from Psalm 27 that will help you rethink how you're dealing with stress in your life. Let's take a look back at Psalm 27. Which verse here might help you when you are in a moment of stress to meditate on that and help you to rethink how you're processing stress? We talked about this a little bit in our last lesson, uh, the last day of this, of this lesson, actually, that our goal isn't to try to escape from what we're doing, but to hide in God in it, to dwell in him within it, to be in that stress, but still come to God, still hide in God. So what verse can help you today to rethink that, to, to stress? So I'm going to say verse one for me, because I love the rhetorical questions. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I dread? That's been rattling through my mind today as I've been thinking about how I engage um, in person, in my ministry, um, in family and friend relationships, online, what am I afraid of? How do I engage? How do I, how do I get out there and engage with culture, engage with people in a winsome way that shares the gospel and to not, not be afraid, to just be bold and that God would fine tune my ability to engage winsomely, but to be bold and how I do that. Whom shall I fear? What shall I dread? Nothing. The Lord's my light, my salvation, my defense. I'll, I'll obey him, right? Okay. Those are my thoughts today as we uh, head to the end of lesson two, day two. And again, glad you're here. Don't forget to say hi, drop a, drop a comment, share this Bible study. Let other people know. A good way to do that is to actually just share the playlist over off of YouTube or if you're listening on the podcast, to so just share the Dwelling Richly podcast. Don't forget to share the talks that people give. We've got talks that I give throughout this, this series. But this summer in particular, we've got great messages coming from the women in our Bible study. We've heard from Monica Chavez, from Pamela Adams. We'll be hearing soon from Ruth and, and Rachel, uh, from Lorraine, from Kathy. So be be sharing, be connecting, be part of this community and let other people know that you're learning and enjoying it as well. All right. Thanks again for being here with me in today's Bible study. And I look forward to being with you um, the next time we get together. Until then, know that you are loved and prayed for. Bye-bye for now.